Well, nothing like Splash and Go to help a little breaking news along on this Tuesday. And that, of course, is the word that Paul Menard is retiring from full-time racing and that Matt DiBenedetto will be stepping into the seat of that Wood Brothers number 21. Uh, Nate, we kind of chuckled as we were talking this morning. The fact that no one knew about this <laughs> was so Paul Menard-like, wasn't it? It was. This is a rare, silly season stunner, Dave. I mean, generally, news tends to leak out ahead of time, but uh, as you said, this is a Paul Menard power move. This is the perfect <laughs> way for Paul Menard to go out as a NASCAR Cup driver. One of the only drivers who's not on Twitter, uh, maybe the most reserved, taciturn, uh, circumspect, whatever word you want to throw out there, driver in NASCAR history, doesn't beat his chest, mm -hmm. always accommodating and available for interviews, but he's not going to be a guy who's out there trumpeting what's happening next for him. And so the fact that this didn't leak out and it involved Paul Menard, not a surprise at all that it was a huge surprise and shock to everybody this morning. Last year I had a conversation with uh, his crew chief, the current crew chief, Greg Irwin, because Irwin had taken over for the Wood Brothers uh, ride there and um, had taken Paul on. And I asked him about the relationship and he said, I spent a couple hours with him before we both said yes. And <laughs> I asked him, I said, you know, what are you in it for? Because I have been to the playoffs, this is Greg Irwin talking, several times and I want to go back. And Paul was honest with him, he said, I want to be competitive. I want to matter. So what do you think, Nate? The last couple of years, what has it been like for the 21 car and Paul Menard? I think that he mattered a little bit more, Dave, than where he was at Richard Childress Racing. If you look at his last two seasons at Richard Childress Racing, he was in the low to mid 20s consistently, but he certainly wasn't a playoff contender. He, he wasn't a winner. As you said, that conversation with his crew chief, Greg Irwin, he wanted to be a playoff contender. He mm -hmm. wanted to make the playoffs and become, you know, he's a one-time winner at the Brickyard in 2011. I think he right. wanted to win again. And if you look at where he was with Wood Brothers in the number 21 ride the last two seasons, he was kind of like back half of the top 20. So there was an improvement over where he was at Childress the last couple of seasons, but it wasn't the improvement that Paul Menard would have wanted if it was about making the playoffs for him. So in the context of that, I think you can understand why he would make this decision. And also with the Wood Brothers, it was a little bit of a step back from they made the playoffs and won a race with Ryan Blaney in 2017. So Paul Menard improved making the team switch. The team maybe slipped back a little bit. How about Paul's future? Uh, there's been you know talk, is he gonna stay in the sport? How much is he, if he wants to race, what's he gonna do? Have you had any insight to that? I, I haven't, Dave. He did, you know, he was asked in June, do you plan to race next season? And at that point, he was all systems go. It sounded like he wanted to mm -hmm. keep racing NASCAR in 2020. I have heard that if and when he were to step back, that he might be interested in some sort of management role with Team Penske, mm -hmm. remaining in NASCAR in some sort of maybe executive level type, board level type capacity. Uh, John Menard, his dad, obviously is a longtime supporter of not mm -hmm. just NASCAR, but the Indy 500 as well. He has yep. a relationship with Roger Penske in the IndyCar series. His Menard sponsored IndyCar won with Simon this Pagino year. this That's year right. in the Indy 500. Yeah. So, I, I think the Menard family certainly is invested in motorsports, and I think we could see Paul staying in NASCAR, just not as a driver. So Matt DiBenedetto, the feel-good story, if you will, for 2019, he's off the market. How big is that? That's huge. I mean, it's, it's such a good feel-good story, Dave, because uh, he's done so well uh, in, in getting these, you know, this recent string of, I think, three top fives uh, and finishing second career best mm -hmm. at Bristol Motor Speedway. Everybody wanted to see him get another ride right. next year and it didn't seem certain at all. I, I, I think myself and I think others thought it would, it would probably be a lateral move or a step back mm -hmm. at best for him. And now he moves into a ride where he's gonna be aligned with Team Penske. Wood Brothers' relationship with them is very, very strong. He should theoretically be driving cars that are on par with Blaney, with Brad Keselowski, with Joey Logano. This is the best opportunity of Matt DiBenedetto's career. To your understanding, uh, the relationship between Wood Brothers and Team Penske is tighter perhaps than Levine was with JGR, correct? So that's better for Matt. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're 100% you're on that, Dave, that next year I think Levine Family Racing will have a closer relationship with yes. Joe Gibbs Racing when, as they reportedly will have Christopher Bell in that car, that was the reason that whole move was made, mm -hmm. apparently. Uh, it's, it's not as strong now. I mean, it's, it's good Toyota stuff, but it's not, I think, the championship caliber. And I think that, again, Ryan Blaney showed a few years ago in 2017, the Wood Brothers alliance with Penske is extremely strong. And I think if you put a really talented driver in one of those cars, they should be able to potentially match what the 12, the two, and the 22 are doing. 
Let's talk Matt just a little bit more. Remember, he bet on himself. He left a ride without anything uh, certain for the year to come and betted himself and then got hired uh, and got that relationship with Bob Levine started. I mean, how huge what he's done for himself in his career. Yeah, I mean, you said it, Davey, that betting on himself, that was a huge risk. He left the number 32 last year uh, in a leap of faith with nothing lined up ahead of him. And again, it's, it's a feel-good story for NASCAR because it shows that maybe merit does matter. Maybe mm -hmm. the fact that De Benedetto has had this recent string of results with all of this pressure about knowing Levine Family Racing was probably going to make a driver change in that nine, number 95 car regardless of what he did, uh, that he had people talking about him because he performed so well. And I don't think he gets this Wood Brothers ride if not for his recent two months of, of just excellent results. Well, it'll be uh, sad to see Paul Menard go from full time. Hopefully, he'll still be around in, in some capacity. Um, not on Twitter yet, I doubt, even with this move. <laughs> Probably never. Probably never. <laughs> uh, but for Matt V's sake, uh, I tell you what, why don't we have him on Motor Mouse tomorrow? Yeah, Good let's call. just schedule that way back when, just in case. He's going to be our guest there, so you'll be able to call in, ask him your questions, find out all his reasonings, and I bet you're going to get a big smile and a few laughs, <laughs> out of Matt DiBenedetto. That's Splash and Go. Big news today.